Good morning. This morning I'm introducing Cutlass Bridge 4. Cutlass Bridge is a SketchUp extension that exports a cut list in a file format compatible with Cutlass Plus FX, Microsoft Excel, OpenOffice Calc, or any application that accepts a comma separated value file. Today we are going to demonstrate an export to the most powerful of these options, Cutlass Plus FX. Due to the short length of this introductory video, I'm going to use a model that has attributes already assigned. So let's get started. I've already installed Cutlass Bridge 4, and I've opened the extended entity info which you can find under the window menu. I also have opened the layers dialog box and the entity info dialog box. I've selected one component down here, that's the style of this cabinet. And notice in the Entity Info, we have a number of attributes assigned. From top to bottom, we have a component number. This says Cabinet 11, the 24th part. We have a subassembly, Cabinet 11. It's an upper cabinet, and this is the part of the end panel subassembly. We have a tag called GM9. What that means is Grain Match 9. It's going to grain match this style to the one next to it. Well, I'll zoom in here. That style will be grain matched to the one which is joined with a bevel. This one right here. And you notice they both have the tag grain match 9. Notice the material type is rough lumber. Material name is maple. We're going to use the resizing mode right here. So this is checked. And the thickness of this particular part is going to be resized by a 32nd of an inch and the width is going to be resized by a 16th of an inch. That means this will be cut to 1 32nd of an inch thicker than finished dimension. And this will be cut 1 16th of an inch thicker than finished dimension. Notice for the same part that's selected here, over in the Entity Info, we have the name C11 UEP because it's part of this subassembly. Right end front style. So this is the right end panel front style. And it's part of the upper end panels. The upper end panels can be found right here as a layer. So for this model, I've organized the layers by major sub-assemblies, base boxes, base doors, base draws, base end panels, and base face frames, and base ladders. We can do the same thing for the upper cabinets. Now let's produce the cut list. Let me bring this back, get the wall out of here because we don't actually want to pr uh, produce a cut list for the wall. And I'm going to select everything. That's everything that's going to be included in the cut list. Now it's a simple matter of going to the file menu. And choose export to cut list plus FX. Notice I get a message here. It says the CSV file has been written to users Joe desktop cabwriter demo master dot CWX. Well, first of all, um, this is probably a bug that I will fix on the next uh, release. This is not a CSV file in this case. It's a CWX file. The name of the file is the same as the name of the skip file, this model. And it's placing it in the same place that the model file exists, that is, on my desktop. So I'll be able to find it on my desktop with the file extension of CWX. All I need to do now is press OK and I'll go to my desktop folder. I brought the desktop folder into the window here and notice right next to the cab writer demo master skip is a cab writer demo master CWX. All I need to do now is double click on this and notice what happened. It come up with Cutlass Plus FX and the Cutlass already in the window. 
Let's take a look at this. Here's my part numbers, subassemblies. Notice the subassemblies are the same names as the layer names in the model. The description of the part is the component name, the number of copies of each that I need, their thickness, width, and length. Now this is the thickness, width, and length that you're going to cut in the shop. It's not the finished thickness, width, and length because some of them have been, some of these parts have been resized. This is the material type, material name. This is whether or not you can rotate the part. Some parts aren't seen, so we don't care about the grain direction. So in that case, we would say something like this, this stretcher. Stretchers are never seen, so it can be rotated. If you're going to put banding around shelves and things like that, that would show up here. This tells me if anything's been resized. For instance, if I choose this one, it says the thickness and width have been resized. So if I look at the thickness here, and I'll just open this up a little bit, it's 27 30 seconds. If I go to the finished thickness, Notice it's 13 sixteenths, or 26 30 seconds. So this has been resized by 1 30 second of an inch in thickness. Same thing with the width. This is 2 and 5 sixteenths, and this is 2 and a quarter. It's been resized in this column by an increment of 1 16th of an inch. Now here's another column that's interesting, and that's the tags column. In the tags column, you see a bunch of numbered um, GM1, GM2, GM3, GM4, so on and so forth. What those are is styles that have been designated as being grain matched. So this is my cut list. I can sort. by any of these columns, either part number, subassembly, or probably the most interesting thing to do is to sort by material name first, material type second, description third, subassembly fourth, and finally part number. And now you get things that are sort of in alphabetical order uh, by part number and then by subassembly. Now the nice thing about Cutlass Plus FX is I can go to a layouts drawing. And here I have all of the layouts for all of the various pieces of sheet materials that I have in my model. Notice this is all the one quarter inch plywood. If I want to go to the three quarter diagrams, I just select maple plywood three quarter or the maple plywood pre-finished three-quarter. And you'll notice I have a lot of diagrams here. Now the nice thing about this is that Cutlass Plus FX automatically optimizes the layout of these for the minimum waste. So that's it. That's a quick generation of the Cutlass. And in our course, SketchUp Comprehensive course for Cutlass Bridge 4, you will learn lots of strategies for assigning attributes and for creating cut lists for various types of projects, furniture projects, structural projects like residential homes, and cabinetry like we've shown here. Have a good day and I hope you enjoyed this introduction to Cutlass Bridge 4.